When he was at FNB, he shook up the banking market, but always had a very healthy interest in wine. Then he retired from banking and started shaking up the venture capital market. This is The Money Makers. I'm Bruce Whitfield, and welcome to the show. Tonight, I'm joined by the founders of a company called Port to Port, Vincent Biera and Niccolo Storgileoni Pudel, to find out why the former CEO of FNB, the founder of Montegray Capital, Michael Jordan, is investing in their business. Um, what makes you guys so appealing to Michael Jordan, Vincent? Well, there, there, there are a number of things. Um, obviously, that uh, when we uh, when we first met, we uh, first of all shared the uh, the common passion for good wine. Uh, both of us being active in the in the wine industry also, and I think just a, a general sort of passion for for the nice things in life. Um, and uh, the 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 next was probably that. Uh, uh, he's very tech savvy, very sort of industrious when it comes uh, to sort of growing his knowledge around the tech area, the online space. Um, he was revolutionary back in his uh, in his former position, obviously. And when we struck up a conversation both based on those two, it uh, became evident that we uh, were sort of looking in the same direction. Nicolo, how did you, Vincent, uh, hook up uh, in the in the wine business and come up with a plan to put to to Michael Yodan? We are friends, first of all. We, we met socially, I think, uh, five years ago. And um, myself, I, I have a digital background. I run a digital agency here in Cape Town. And uh, slowly, I started working for the, for the wine industry. And then I met Vincent. And um, Vincent has a wine background, so we put together our common passions. And we realized that there was an opportunity there. And so we kind of complement each other, and uh, we saw that opportunity. Okay, so port to port then is I don't know the the marriage that has yielded between your between your over your friendship. Give me a sense of the business model, uh, Vincent. It was about uh, exploring and uh, in some way also um, tapping into the the online market. That was for us the, the most important. Um, wine, obviously, and all complementary products are, are more. Uh, uh, interacted between people but we we realized that there was an opportunity it is growing uh, at a tremendous pace although we are still looking uh, at a small market share obviously but uh, it's better to to start when it's still quite quite undeveloped and uh, so what we did is we said uh, you know both of us having a European background we looked at uh, um, the food culture and the curation around food, the understanding of food, the communication on food uh, was particularly important, especially the higher end foods. And so we said, uh, how about we, you know, sort of uh, two birds with one stone, online, beautiful curation of these products. Um, and that was really the, uh, the first uh, step. The second was to us customer service. Um, to a great extent in South Africa, service uh, to the customer is something that we very often hear of, but still is neglected or mis uh, mistreated or just not, not delivered really. And uh, that for us was another key element. And uh, thirdly, obviously distribution. Um, how do we get it to the customer beautifully packed, um, in time and reliably? Uh, and th those are the silver bullets that everybody within the South African online space has been battling with for the last decade and a half, probably so much so that we saw a merger between the mighty Kalahari and 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 their and their new and their new business partners, the guys um, whose names have now <laughs> conveniently at this time of night slipped my mind. But uh, the online space is hard. The online space hasn't got massive acceptance. Uh, has it, uh, when, we, when we look at it, Niccolo, I mean, are you making progress in that online space? Um, I mean, we are trying to approach customers in two ways. So from one side, thanks to a, I would say, cutting edge platform. So we had the opportunity to develop it in-house, which is quite an important thing. And to make some, and our experience in the industry um, enabled us to, to, to develop exactly what we wanted to, to bring to our customers. So on one side, we, the platform is the easiest you can find. It is easy to buy, it is easy to track, it is easy to, to, to browse through your catalog, etc. On the other side, the service is personalized. So I think we, for those customers which are maybe not so used to the online sphere, we take them by the hand. So we meet them maybe at fairs or socially, or telephonically, and then slowly we educate them to see the advantages in, in buying online, which there are many, obviously. 
Now, I mean, South Africa, I think we, we burned our fingers on the wine club concept of many, many years ago. There's still wine clubs that attempt to go. The banks had them. The credit card companies had them. They were the fronts for, for wine clubs. Um, aren't South Africans a little bit fed up of this method of sort of uh, pre-ordering produce and then waiting in vain for it to arrive? Completely. I think the more uh, South, Africa, uh, South Africans are also exposed to international services, where they where they purchase and have an immediate gratification, I think they 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 really also want that type of service here. So reliability is fundamental because otherwise you just go into a shop where you can you, you see what you buy. But for us, it's uh, it's paramount that you purchase and receive within the indicated time exactly what you purchased. And with wine, it's very specific because it's not only different labels; it's also different vintages. So there is. It's quite a lot of precision involved. I mean, the precision is, and I mean, you've got to have a, a huge facility to store, or do you do it, uh, if you're doing it on a bespoke basis, uh, Nicola, then you've got to be doing it, I suppose, in a way that if I want the, I don't know, a 2000 Bordeaux or a 1965 James Bond type uh, French vintage, um, that you can procure it and then get it to me within a period of time that is faster, better, more efficient and more pleasurable than me popping over to my local, I mean, Cape Town, Carolines or in Joburg, Norman Goodfellows. Yeah, 100%. And uh, technology plays a big role because today there are available a lot of solutions uh, and we make them available if they are not available by developing them ourselves where you need less people and you can have a bigger sized business organized in a more, more streamlined way by integrating all your systems, so your website, your inventory system, your customer service, and uh, that helps a lot because that's where the mistakes happen, unfortunately, is where there, the more there is human intervention, the more there are mistakes. And the time we save, we can put it into customer service, so in that personalized relationship which I was mentioning. Vincent, personal is expensive. Um, how do you compete from a price perspective or does your market not care about price? I think people or consumers generally, if they know what they're paying for, if there's a certain uh, transparency, they, they're happy to spend the, uh, the extra dollar. I think we, we were very clear in, the, um, in our setup that we were going into fine goods and uh, fine products in general. Um, I think you typically find two types of people there, the, the ones that obviously are very knowledgeable and uh, that uh, are very selective in what they do. They know the difference between the vintages, they uh, know the tiny little producers, they have um, make a point of interacting with these producers and understanding the history behind the product. And um, so obviously they will, they will come and, and, and pinpoint exactly what it is they want and um, quite happy to, to find it with us and, and then spend the... Uh, spend the appropriate money. And then you obviously have those who, who might be collectors, who might be aficionados, but uh, less knowledgeable on the product itself. And uh, we engage and communicate with both very happily and uh, quite passionately in the sense that um, the point you made before, you know, they're not tired of this. I think if you um, take the stance that um, allow us to, to understand what it is you really, uh, uh, what you're looking for and how we can you know, help you learn more about this product and obviously also just enjoy it as opposed to I understand what you want and I'm going to send you a case of it every month. Um, it's, a very, it's a very different approach mm -hmm. and I think if you, if you deliver on, on good service, um, if you deliver on a, mm -hmm. on, a, on a price transparency and obviously on a nice product selection, there still is a market, albeit small in South Africa, that, uh, that will certainly engage on that. Half the fun, though, of being in a space where you, prepare, where you go and look for a truffle, for example, or you're looking for particular mushrooms, or you're looking for something that is seasonal, uh, whether it be, it be fresh herbs or whether it be a key ingredient uh, for, for a dish that you're making, is going out and finding it yourself. Um, how do you balance that, then, uh, b between that sort of need uh, Vincent, when it comes to uh, high-end customers who, you know, who also have souls, who also like to get a little bit of grit beneath their fingernails? Well, I, I think one doesn't exclude the other. It's, it's not to say that we, we're seeing a revolution in, in both areas. Obviously, the, uh, the brick-and-mortar retail is, is responding in, in turn, obviously, to what is happening online. Um, our focus just happens to be online because we, we see a greater opportunity there. I think, uh, you know, taking your point, one of the important things is if you uh, the, the, the extent in which you can curate product online is in many ways often far superior to what you do in the store. I mean, taking wine, for example, unless you go to a very 
uh, specific and and uh, uh, liquor store most times if you purchase your your wine, even your higher end wines in, in supermarkets or, or those types of outlets, the information available to you is often very limited. So, you know, you might uh, have heard of the product before, you might uh, be attracted by the label, uh, you clearly have your budget in which you shop. However, if you go online, there's a very different experience, it's a very different interaction, and uh, it's, it's curated to the point where all the information that you could possibly want is, uh, is available to you. You can click your way through it, you can browse through it. If you have any other questions, we have a live chat on the site. Um, our entire team is uh, equally passionate uh, when it comes to, to these products, so there's always a fun interaction, obviously, behind the scenes also, if you do have any sort of open questions. What, so, what I think the most demanding yes, order that you've been able to fulfill, Vincent? What has been the one you've looked at, you've gone, oh my goodness me, are we going to be able to pull this off? And you have. We're going quite a bit into what we, what we want to do, and it goes back to, to sort of engaging with our customers on a, on a personal level as well, and we do that with a lot of our private customers is uh, we had uh, one customer who was uh, quite loyally affiliated to a number of other um, wine programs um, said, right, um, I love wine, I adore wine, I've been following what you do, here's a budget, um, I shop on three tiers, and he told us, right, I need my everyday drinking, tier one, I need my um, uh, a special wine that I can uh, keep or drink now and then I want a selection of truly iconic wines that uh, will just uh, sort of blow my socks off and uh, he said right put a put a put a basket together for me send it through and I'll, I'll drink my way through it with my friends and uh, if I approve then I'll move my business on to you so obviously you know it's it's kind of a, a dream customer and we took uh, we had a lot of fun putting that uh, putting that basket to together putting that curation together and uh, yeah fingers fingers crossed but that that is sort of obviously what we like to do is it's 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 a lot of fun um, but it was challenging I, I wish you luck with it i really do i think it's a fabulous concept i just hope the market is big enough thank port you. to port founders vincent bura and nicolo sorgileoni pudel thank you very much for joining us and thank you for watching there'll be more money makers innovators and crazy folks on the next money makers till then bye bye